Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. And here we're going to look at an example of a completion of a measure space. So let's let omega, f, and mu be a measure space. That means f is a sigma field. And let f of u be the completion of f relative to mu. Now if a is any subset of omega, now that what this means is it doesn't have to be a set of the sigma field. It can be any set. Let's define these uh, measures. Mu sub zero of A is the supremum of all sets that A is a cover for B. So you take all the sets that are subsets of A, find the measure, and then take the largest. That's what the supremum means. And mu sub zero is going to be the infimum of all the measures of B such that B covers A. So A is a subset of B. Take all the measures of these and then take the smallest. That's the infimum. And it's really, you know, that's kind of the closest one to A. And then this one is the closest one to A, but, but could be bigger. And this is the close one to A, but could be smaller. They could equal. Now, we're going to prove these two statements. If A is an element of F of mu, so that these three measures equal. If mu sub zero of A is equal to mu sub superscript of A, if they're equal and finite, then A must be in the completion of F relative to mu, F of mu. So let's look at this. So if A is in F of U, then we know we can write it as the union of B union N, where B is in the sigma field, and N is a subset of M, which is in the sigma field, and M has measure zero. Since B is a subset of A, we know the measure of B is less than or equal to the measure of A. But this is equal to the measure of BUN, right? We said those are equal. But this is, a, is a less than or equal to the measure of BUM, right? Because they're subsets. And this is a larger subset than that. Well, then this is less than or equal to the sum of those two measures. But that is equal to B, right? But the measure of A is greater than or equal to measure of B, and less than or equal to the measure of B. So that says these two must equal. And thus, these three measures equal, right? Because we're finding a set that is, you know, slight, uh, you know, is equal to or larger, and we found it, and we found a set that is less than or equal to that. But those are equal, so they have to be the same. So that says all three of these measures are equal. <coughs> now, Let's assume that the, these two measures are equal, n finite. That means there are sets Bn and Cn in the sigma field with this relationship. Bn is a subset of A, which is a subset of B. But now these are equal. So these sets, they have to go down to A, right? So that means the measure of their difference goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Now let's let B be that infinite union of BN and C be the infinite union of CN. Then we know A minus B is a subset of, of C minus B, right? Because C is, is bigger than A, so this has to be larger than this set. And that means that the measure of A minus B is less than or equal to the measure of C minus B. But that's less than or equal to the measure of Cn minus Bn because this is, this is a larger set than that and this is a smaller set than B. So this set is larger than this one. So that means the measure is bigger. But as n goes to infinity, these two, this measure goes to zero. So now if we let E equal B union A minus B. Now, B is a subset of the sigma field, right? It has to be, because uh, it's closed under countable unions. And A minus B is, a, is a, um, in the sigma field. But 
we just showed that the measure of A minus B is zero. So that means since A can be represented like this, where B is in the sigma field, and this is uh, of measure zero, then A has to be in the completion of F relative to mu. So that means A is an element of it. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.